What is the shape of this feather? Would you say it was narrow or would you say it was broad? Narrow. narrow. On the birds that were hatched this year, they're going to be a little bit browner. It's not every day that you see college students sharing their knowledge of songbirds with a group of high school kids. Who's a good bird? But a collaborative project between Steve Trombilak's vertebrate natural history class at Middlebury College and students enrolled in Madison County's Diversified Occupations Program has become something of a tradition. For almost two decades, special educator Rodney Olson has used bird banding to engage his high school students in science, the outdoors, and the environment. Oh. Having my students be able to actually talk and share the things that they've learned with Rodney's students it expands my own student's education, it expands my student's confidence in being able to share the information, but it also opens up the realization that connecting with the birds is not just another college subject. It's, it's life. It's something that, that high school students enjoy. It's something that adults enjoy. And Rodney's students are so excited about coming out and seeing the songbirds. They have an infectious enthusiasm about learning new things and engaging with new things. And I can just feel that energy flowing into my own students. What might the state bird of Vermont be? That. While songbirds may be new to some of Rodney's students, they are no strangers to the process of banding birds of prey. We use banding as a tool to motivate students to learn. So add that word. Let's pick three more vocabulary words. Start another story. The Diversified Occupations Program serves high school students with special academic, vocational, and behavioral needs. The goal is for every student to graduate with a job in place and the skills needed for independent living. Our whole science class is about the birds. Each day at the banding station, they get a vocabulary word. So when they come back to the classroom, they put together short stories called masterpieces, where they pick three vocabulary words and they write a story, a fictitious story, anything they want. And as long as they include those vocabulary words and show that they have understanding of them, um, it's totally fine. And we got the hawk, and I noticed that it had something in its crop. Good use of the vocabulary word. We're really using banding as a tool to motivate these kids to learn. So even though we're studying science, it's really a lot of reading and writing and math going on. In the fall, Rodney teaches his students how to capture and ban raptors on Snake Mountain in Addison. Beautiful. During the day, they mostly catch migrating red-tailed hawks. But when he takes his students out at night, they have their sights set on owls. Right now, we're just walking up the hill. We're getting close to the owl nets. We'll wait for everybody to, uh, to get together, and we'll walk in as a group. We'll see if there are any owls in the net. And um, if we're lucky enough, we'll bring it on down to the sugar house and put a band on it. To repay the college students for sharing their knowledge of songbirds, the high school students reciprocate by inviting the vertebrate natural history students to an evening of owl banding. The bird we try to band is the northern sawwood owl, and it's uh, just a small owl, fits in the palm of your hand. And uh, it's a pretty common owl in this area, and it breeds here and migrates south. So during migration, we set up nets, we play a caller, and we try to catch as many as we can. If you were to go to look for them, during the daytime, you probably wouldn't have much of a chance of finding one, but on one night on Snake Mountain, you could catch as many as 30, 33 owls. Okay, so the feet are clear, so then you go for the wings, and that clipping noise is him, and he's smacking his beak because he's mad. So that's good, too. That's a, a good feisty bird, so the wings are free. And usually the as far as education, there's no better educator than the northern sawwood owl. It's often coined the educational ambassador because it has a cute factor of about 9.9 .9 or so and and everybody loves the sawwood owls. Yep. This is actually a large one. This is a female. So the male Once they actually get to work with the real animals, it solidifies in a way. I mean, you can actually see the the sparks ignite and you, you can't even hold them back. At the banding station, the owls are placed headfirst in the tubes to keep them calm. Is it good? 99? Like they've been doing it for years, Rodney's students go right to work assisting him in taking measurements and recording data. Okay, 137 for the wing cord. 
get that toe out of there. You're going to put it in through. Don't squeeze yet. It's great for my students to see Rodney and how he teaches and the ability to make natural history a gateway for students into both science and math. On this cool October night, four owls were caught in the nets. With each capture, the high school students became the teachers, sharing their knowledge of the owls with the Middlebury College students. We learned techniques of how to ban the birds, so we set up mist nets, we learned how to release the birds from the nets, how to ban them, record the data, and ultimately what the data is used for, which is this pretty much this long-term study for you know, tracking bird movements. And we just, we get to interact with all these animals that you know, we would otherwise not even know existed really. And so Once a bird is banded and its measurements recorded, it's time to release it. For most students, this is the most enjoyable step of the process. Let's see, he, he's ready to go, let's see, which is good. Many of them have never held a wild animal and done it in a way that the animal's calm and, and safe and then you can release the animal and watch it fly away. Okay, so now, tickle fingers, tickle fingers. Oh. Oh. It's an eye-opening experience. It's a, it's a life-changing experience. And a lot of them end up deciding to pursue wildlife biology as a career or environmental education as a career just because of that connection that they make. While the career paths for these students may be drastically different, the lessons learned are the same. In addition to a better understanding of wildlife and the environment, this hands-on collaboration develops confidence in the students and a tangible connection to nature. First thing we're going to do is put a band on it. So uh, we have that band. This course has sort of allowed me to recognize the world around me and ultimately really establish a relationship, sort of be more conscious of what I'm doing and how that might impact, say, the birds or the plants. And so I guess it's just made me a more aware, natural citizen in this global, global society. <laughs> what the kids usually get out of it is the fact that they become aware of what's in their own backyard. So this goes on every year, it goes on every night. The birds are migrating by, but you'll never know it unless you're out there. So say yes to things, go out. When somebody says, let's go try something, let's go experience something new, let's go outside, let's go enjoy nature. The birds are just amazing. When you're out there and you get a bird in the hand or take a bird out of a net, place a band on his leg, and then get to watch it fly away, it's pretty magical. And the kids appreciate that.